Welcome back to the Golden Age of DC Comics 365. I am going through this wonderful book and it, for its intended purpose. It's a page a day um, blurb about the, the Golden Age of DC Comics. The Golden Age of, of comic books is basically in about the, the mid to early 1930s to 1955. Uh, DC Comics basically ushered in its uh, its own uh, age of superheroes in 1937 with with um, with Action Comics number one, and then after that and came Action it came Detective Comics number 27, and then what we have today is what we consider this some kind of modern mythology, and uh, yeah, but I don't think Zeus had a trademark. And I don't think that, you know, the mother goddess Gaia needed, uh, you could, could, could put up a copyright strike. <laughs> You're picking up what I'm putting down. Yes, it's John and John Lennon's influence on me. I tell you that much. But it's February 9th, I believe. And it is. And so let's turn the page. As Bob Seeger said, uh, this one's interesting because it's a fun kid oriented um, this is, uh, the story is by Alfred Bester. The art is by Stan K. This is from Adventure Comics number 77, which was published on, in August of 1942. And, um, yeah, so this is about, this is about Genius Jones. All right. And he is a nerd. I'll go on, you know, you know, there is a difference between nerd and geek. There really is. I know the two have been conflated recently to the chagrins of real nerds everywhere. Um, but the science heroes are usually nerds, the doctors, the professors. Uh, and they get, they help and get out of troubles, get us out of troubles as much as the lantern-jawed you know, beefy males that uh, like to brawl and have hair on their toe knuckles and things. But uh, this is Genius Jones, and I'll read the I'll read the blurb here. Yes, please. Um, Going against the grain, Genius Jones was a hero who relied on brains rather than brawn. Young John Jones was shipwrecked at a tender age with a library of books, and emerged as a mental giant whose services were for sale. He eventually concocted a costume and called himself The Answer Man, a reference to one of the most popular radio shows of the day. Hmm. Infinite Regress. It's turtles all the way down. It's, it's, it's reference upon reference upon reference. I'll get into some, an idea, too, in just a second about that. But, uh, but yes, he, his, na his superhero name of Genius Jones was The Answer Man, which was a reference to a, uh, a game show that was on the radio at that time. And, um, yeah, that's, I, that's the, the internal references, yeah, of co comic books to culture. And, and then now it's coming back. So it's a, <laughs> the original writer on this series became a major science fiction novelist, author of The Demolished Man and the Star is My Destination. That would be Alfred Bester. I'm unfamiliar with his science fiction work. But he's very good at integral. He's very good at integral and differential calculus. He knows the scientific names of beings uh, animalculus. In short, in matters vegetable, animal, and mineral, he'll be the death of every racketeering crook and criminal. We present herewith the short history of of the origin of Genius Jones, plus the first madcap adventure of the young man who knows all the answers in the case of the off-key crooner. There we go. <laughs> I gotta work on my Ted Knight voice. Hey, meanwhile, the trouble alert. Do do. There we go. That's the book from the inside. That's the book from the outside. I like how it explains the cultural reference of its day to the character's name there. Um, it makes me think, yeah, it makes me think of Turtles All the Way Down. It's something I say when it's like, well, it's just one reference stacked upon another and upon another, and it's, it's Turtles All the Way Down. And um, I think of some something or someone 
uh, a character, uh, specifically, I think, a Harley Quinn. Um, and she's literally a reference upon a reference upon a reference. She's a turtle all the way down. Um, why? Because um, let's just think for some for a second. Um, <clears throat> okay, it's, it's, tw it's what year it is in the 2020s right now, right? Um, I could recycle this bit next year. You wouldn't know. <laughs> but I'm just kidding. Harley Quinn in our 2020s right now? Try explaining to a young person what is a gangster mall. M-O-L-L. -L -L, mall. A gangster mall. Yeah, right. To the wiki. Let's read something off the internet real quick. Jeez. But a gangster mall is 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 an archetype in um in detective fiction and it's the the gangster's girlfriend um the a gun mall yeah a gun mall or a gangster's mall is the female companion of a professional uh of, of a male professional criminal gun was used a uh, gun was british slang for thief derived from yiddish ganef from the hebrew ganab moil Mall is used as an euphemism. Mall is used as a euphemism for a woman prostitute. Um, and there's famous, and, and oh, and all the and there's a list of prominent gun malls, like real historical ones. George Babyface Nelson had had two. Uh, Clyde Barrow had Bonnie Parker, and um, Bugsy Siegel had Virginia Hill, and um, yeah, there's the, the the list goes on and on. And um, but Harley Quinn's not on this list. But a but a gun mall is not a femme fatale, a fe or a damsel in distress. <clears throat> She's a different feminine archetype in 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 history, um, like a go-to character. And uh, so Joker, being a gangster, was given a mall, a gun mall, in 1992 in Batman the Animated Series. She was uh, breathed into life by the wonderful Arlene Sorkin. Yet everything that Harley Quinn was based on, you could see in 1930s detective fiction. And um, I mean, go check out any of the um, the, the the Jimmy Cagney gangster movies. And um, usually there's a fast talking urbanite uh, woman, you know, beautiful dressed, but also gets the you know unfortunate like. You know the recipient of of uh, bad behavior from the, from his toxic masculinity or or his bad boyness. But uh, but yeah. So just to know that Answer Man, Genius Jones, uh, star of our uh, of our daily comic today, is uh, his name is a reference upon a reference. So would you get the answer, man, if you were to be told that today? Mm, chances are no and chances are that if you tried to explain a gangster mall to, to a young person um, in our 2020s now you probably get a similar response like what huh what's a gangster mall see Harley now is you know predicated upon different references now she's a cipher she's anything that story needs her to be to to, to push story along and um, which is what Joker is to Batman too and uh, that's a conversation for a different day. Maybe when we foresee our first Joker panel, we'll talk more about Joker and Harley. Because Harley's not in the Golden Age. Harley made the transition from a cartoon on a network television to the comic books. And now the movies. And now you, you know who Harley Quinn is. Yes. Huh? But thank you so much for tuning in to... The Golden Age DC Comics, 365 days. We're going to talk about comic books every day for the rest of the year. Tune in tomorrow at 3 p.m. Eastern and find out what we're talking about tomorrow. Give me a thumbs up if you could be so kind, if you'd like this kind of content. Give me a thumbs down if you didn't. I'm a big lad. I can handle it. Um, give me a subscription if you'd be so kind. I'd like to earn your subscription. I make daily content. Uh, I talk about pop culture. Uh, I talk about spirituality. I'm an ordained minister, an amateur theologian. I'm also a professional chef. I can share with you some cooking hacks so you can have nutritious, delicious, and beautiful food in your home to break bread with at your table with your family. And you have a wonderful day. Thank you so much for tuning in today. And tune in tomorrow, okay? Cheers.